Welcome to Renaissance Charge Videos. I'm Rick Friedrich. This will be a short video um, at my next convention in California. Um, I want to talk about something, so I figured I'd just make a video of it quickly uh, rather than try and bring this with me all the way out to California. Um, what we have here is just a homemade inverter. Uh, a really a modified square wave inverter. <laughs> uh, nothing special here, but I just want to uh, point out something in the way of the Don Smith research. And one of the things I uh, need to do in this book that I'm going to be doing, the Don Smith book, which is coming along very nicely, um, but it's, I'm making some of the corrections, not, not correcting every possible thing. Uh, probably some things are going to escape me. Uh, because I'm not some real expert or anything. Uh, but um, one of the uh, mistakes is um, in this circuit right here that's been focused on quite a bit over the years. So if you look at the inverter here, oops, on this side, um, these two are reversed. So this is says negative, and that should be positive, and that says positive should be negative. Um, you can try and run that. In fact, you'll see in my model here, I have the wires actually accidentally reversed, and so which um, it's actually set up in this very way, and um, it doesn't work. So you'll see why. And what I'm going to try and do in the book is explain some of the whys. And so, of course, I'm a researcher. That's my skill set is looking at the fine details and noticing the subtle points. And there's a bunch of things that uh, I think that most people have not noticed in the Don Smith research, and that's what the whole purpose of the book is about. So here's just one sample for you. And um, that, I noticed that someone else had discovered that uh, some years ago, uh, Romer UK, uh, Romero UK, which had, you know, he's did some pretty interesting uh, research some years ago, and he pointed that out in that circuit too, but I had figured this out myself before I noticed what he had said. Well, Don didn't just do that by accident, I mean he did in a sense, but what he did was he copied it. In fact, this is going to be in the book. Um, and I'm going to show the PDF of this uh, publication where there's, um, I think there's like, this one's already page 464. I think there's about seven, 800 pages. It's a really handy book, but it made a mistake. And you can see in there the mistake in the polarity. So it's got the wrong polarity of the battery right there, which is, I guess, easy to do when you forget which side is negative, which side is positive on a battery um, symbol. And so what, no doubt what uh, Don did was just really copy this whole thing in, into this uh, diagram here. And that's the same circuit. Now what's, so it was done wrong in the book and then for some reason Don didn't notice that. Um, I mean, it's a pretty easy mistake. Now, what's interesting is in the book, there's another page. Both of these pages John, Don puts in the original earlier publications, which I'll have this as well. And you can see the um, correct version right here where the polarity is right. Um, this one's running um, with different resistors, but you've got the positive and negative down here correct. So we're going to look at it right now, the demonstration. And so what I have here is, what will happen is you put a transformer in there, just like the circuit diagram has, um, with a center tap. And the other side doesn't have to be a center tap. The one, 110 side doesn't have to be center tap. But um, the secondary side, in this case, this is my secondary, my transformer for my 1AU battery charger. And um, 
So I'm just using this side here and um, using the center tab in the same way as the diagram. And then we just have two transistors here. Uh, we're also going to show, which Don showed too in the book, um, another page which shows the MOSFET version, which is almost identical. It just has a couple more resistors where you'd expect them to be and a couple more capacitors. Um, this one doesn't have any capacitors in it. It's a very simple setup and we're going to show this running at the incorrect voltage because this would really require about 20 volts to run this um, according to this charger. So what I'm going to do is run it with 12 volts. We're going to run the, you know, just three different bulbs here and you're going to see the frequency is going to change as the voltage isn't correct. So so right now we're going to go at 12 volts, so the, volt, the frequency is going to be down probably somewhere around 80 hertz or something like that. And uh, so I just want to run it. Um, you can see if I do it backwards, nothing happens. So I do have the wires according to the way it was wrongly um, made in the book. And now we're going to put the positive to the negative, um, which in this case, you know, it doesn't matter to do it backwards as I just showed you. So now I'm going to do it the correct polarity and we're going to see the light. So you're going to hear something first, the low hum and so there's the light at, um, I mean it's a 15 watt bulb and I've got a 200 watt LED light here lighting up the room so you can't really tell. So what we're going to do now is put a jumper wire, if I can find one, here. Hopefully this wire works. And now we're going to run this. So you hear the frequency. It's a lot faster. So that's the bulb is going to run a lot brighter, so I don't want to continue that. I don't have any on and off switch on this right now, so so we'll go up now to a hundred watt bulb. Again, so you can see it took a little bit to start it. That's running about 140. Well, let's see what it's running at. Let's see if I can connect this in. So right now it's at 150 volts. And then under load it's going to go to the 132. So it's not too bad. I mean, your your line can definitely get to 130. Um, but this is a square wave, so it's a different. The voltage is going to be lower on the square wave than it is on the, the pure sine wave. Um, so it's kind of pushing this frequency would be higher. I guess I, I'll try this one and we'll look at the frequency. This is a 200 watt bulb. So we'll look at the frequency on this. Well, it says 64 hertz. So let's go back to AC voltage. Again, 100. And, I mean, it's draining the. Well, it shouldn't be draining the battery too much time, but 149, and takes a little bit to get going. Oh, the problem is, is this wire. Um, if I had another wire here, I could uh, prevent it from drawing too much on this wire. You can smell the... Phew. 
burning the wire. It's just a little too much for it. Anyway, I was doing it before, um, but it's really too much for this transformer. I think it's um, pushing it a little bit too hard. Okay, so what's the big deal, Rick? You're talking about stuff from the 80s. <laughs> this is not anything special. It is correcting that schematic is one thing, is what one of the purposes of this. But the other thing is, this is the final stage of the process, which actually I think almost everybody doesn't get. Um, and it's really, in some ways, the simplest part of it. In some ways, it's, it's hard, more mysterious. Um, the simple part of it is you're changing the frequency. So you've got the three stages, right? You've got the agitation phase in a free energy system, collection phase, and then you've got the transformation utilization phase. And so this is the last stage now. This is uh, taking this high frequency, high voltage, stepping it down, and stepping down the frequency and the voltage, right? Uh, and then using it. So here's the bulb. Here's, so you can um, use this system. It's fairly easy, and, and Don showed that, where you can um, have whatever transformer primary voltage um, step down, uh, you know, so you could have, you know, 3,000, 2,000 volts stepping down to uh, your secondary, um, well, you're usually reversing the primary and secondary on the transformer, like I'm doing here, and you're going to be having, now the secondary is going to be the um, primary. So on this secondary, you're going to be stepping down the voltage um, to whatever, 110 or 220. Um, so on that one over there, we have four 480 volt system, and we have to step it down to either 220 or, or 110. And this one over here is uh, 10,000 volts um, on the output. Um, it's crazy amount. And uh, I have to step that down accordingly. So instead of voltage dividers, the transformer works great. So, um, so now then you have to step down the frequency. And this again, this is a transformer made for 60 hertz. So you just have to um, do what it takes to uh, do that. And that's just, um, you know, inverter does that to some extent, so you have to match resistances and capacitances with your inductance and your, your core material and your transformer. So, like I said, these are 60 hertz transformers, so the core is already for, meant for that, but it will still, as you see, if I change the voltage on that, I've changed the frequency, um, so we have to match that and that. So it's not all about getting the right voltage, it's also about um, adding capacitance and resistance in there to adjust for that. So it's just a basic thing that I talked about in the meetings and I um, won't have an, an opportunity to demonstrate at this particular meeting coming up so I wanted to do a video on it. Um, so anyway, that's a cheap poor man's version of an inverter but you wouldn't want to run your electrical um, computers or something off of this, the square wave. You can run bulbs, as you can see, you can run resistive loads, heating loads, and that, but not, um, you know, your computers and motors or pumps or something like that. So, so thanks for watching.